by now, you probably know what this logo on the back of a device means. This is a Kindle. But there is one key change that makes this the most unique Kindle that has ever been made. And you could probably tell immediately what that feature is. After all, this Kindle got me writing again. But probably the best part about this new Kindle is that it's only getting started. Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? This right here is the Kindle Scribe. First off, shouts out to Amazon for sponsoring this video, in which I'll be talking about the first of many regular updates that are coming throughout the year. But first, I do want to talk about my experience with the Kindle Scribe and why it has actually become the Kindle I have used most out of all of the ones that I have owned. By now, you probably know the drill. This is a Kindle through and through, and its main function is going to be as an e-reader. Right here on the home screen, you can already see a bunch of suggestions based upon stuff that I have already read on my Kindle or Kindles, but of course, we're talking about this one in particular. It is larger than most Kindles at 10.2 inches with the screen size, and that large canvas is now writing forward, but of course, it's totally useful for all of the reading. The construction is sturdy yet very minimal, and as usual, Amazon just keeps things pretty simple when it comes to the actual stylings. What we have in this particular Kindle Scribe is just a gray slab all around. Over on one side is just a USB-C port that's used mainly for charging, and then a power button, the single button that just allows you to get right into the action. Uh, of course, I do have a passcode here just to keep everything more or less private and secure. This USB-C port over here does charge the Kindle up pretty quickly, and honestly, the battery on this and pretty much any Kindle can last for a long time. Uh, this, in terms of just writing, can go for like three weeks, which is a very long time, and I don't think I've ever run down the battery so much that I actually had any range anxiety. Given that this is a writing forward Kindle, you do get a stylus here, and the stylus can actually be a premium edition, which is the one that I have if you pay 30 extra dollars. The premium pen has an eraser end over on the other side, and a button here that can be programmed for a number of different shortcuts, like for example, holding it down and then being able to highlight easily, no matter where you are in your notebooks. And of course, for safekeeping, the stylus is easily magnetized over onto the side. One thing that you'll notice here is that the business end, this front portion, is asymmetrical. There is an area over here on the side that is larger than the bezel on the other end, uh, but that just makes it a little bit easier to grip this rather large tablet with one hand if you want to just sit down and read comfortably. One nice thing is that if you do want to switch things up, you can actually just flip the Kindle all the way over. The image, the book, or in this case, the comic, uh, will go ahead and flip as well, and then you can use that portion with your right hand for easier handling. You'll see these four nubs on the back, and while they do raise up the Kindle a little bit off of the surface that it might be resting on, they are actually magnetic contacts for the case that you can use with the Kindle Scribe. Functionally, this case is quite good. There's actually an area on the bottom for safekeeping of the stylus, and then the cover itself will origami into a certain shape so that you can angle the Kindle for easier reading or easier writing. My one gripe about the case is that it's not particularly, well, stylish. <laughs> you can get a bunch of different cases for a bunch of different other Kindles, but this one is uh, basically the main one that you want to get for its functionality and the safekeeping of the stylus. It's just this uh, gray slab or black slab here, and uh, while it might not be particularly stylish, it is definitely very practical. And if I'm honest, when I'm actually writing on the Kindle Scribe, I usually just have it flat on a surface like this, just the way that I learned how to write back in grade school. The reading experience is also exactly how you would expect, likely just bigger on here than you might be used to with other Kindles. Books are found easily in the Kindle store, they are downloaded and then easily accessed. Customizing the text size, the backlight brightness, and also the warmth make reading comfortable in pretty much any scenario. And you can even pair Bluetooth headphones to listen to audible editions where available. But you know what? We are talking about the Kindle Scribe, so why don't we get this stylus off the side and get writing? So for going from the home screen over to the library where all of your downloaded books are, you can then go over to Notebooks. Nice and easy to have everything just set up so that it's intuitive and easy to navigate. You'll just create a notebook, and it's in this notebook that you can name what it is that you're writing about and then choose from a number of different templates. Personally, I tend to use the dot matrix one the most. Uh, it gives me just enough guidance to keep everything in line. And then from there, you just start writing. The writing experience can also be fairly customizable. You can head over to this toolbar over on the side and you have your choice between just main writing, highlighting, erasing, and also the pointer, uh, which just makes the stylus work like your finger. Uh, no writing involved, it's just your navigational stylus. But that brings us to the first of the major updates. Uh, one thing that 
Amazon have added into the Kindle Scribe is the ability to choose from different types of writing utilities. For example, you have the pen, fountain pen, marker, and pencil, with each and every single one having five different levels of thickness in the writing. And with these various writing tools, you can actually use the pressure sensitivity and tilt functionality of the pen so that you can actually cater how everything is rendering on the screen. So those of you who would want to doodle on the Kindle Scribe, you certainly can a lot better when it comes to these new tools that were added in. When the Kindle Scribe first came out, I know some people were a little bit miffed about the pressure sensitivity, or rather the different writing tools that were available because you couldn't really do, let's say, higher levels of drawing on here as easily. But now with the updated uh, writing tools, you certainly can do that with things like the pencil and the marker. But even at that point and certainly continuing on, the writing experience has been very satisfactory. I've written so many things just straight up on here. And you might've noticed that this Kindle Scribe has been on the sort of corner here of my videos because I've had my notes written on there and I just do the videos more or less off the cuff with a little bit of guidance from the notes that I wrote on the Kindle Scribe. Don't worry, I did not forget about doing a tea break on this video. Uh, actually, uh, we don't have a timer for this one because it is an herbal tea and usually you could just leave the bag in there for herbal teas and let it steep for a long, long time. But you know what, because we are talking about writing and all of that, I do wanna talk about one of the main reasons why I love using the Kindle Scribe and it's because I do tend to journal uh, as much as possible, maybe not every single day, but I try my best. And one of the things that I write the most here on the Kindle Scribe are my gratitude journals. See, I'm always about having gratitude for everything. And I want to remind all of you to try and have some level of gratitude on the daily, to remember things that you might appreciate throughout the day. And by doing so, we remember to look at the positives and to look at the things that we should appreciate rather than getting caught up in all of the stress or all of the negativity that we might come across every single day. And there are many different ways that you can get into journaling like this. Uh, I personally enjoy the five minute journal, but it could be as simple as just jotting down three things every morning or every night that you were grateful for during that day. And perhaps today I'm going to say that I am grateful for all of you who came to watch my video. I'll go ahead and highlight that as well by hitting the button over on the side and just highlighting as so. And to end this tea break, like I do most of them, I will just go ahead and ask you, what's going on, everybody? Let me know one or two things that you might be grateful for right now in the comment sections down below, uh, whether or not you're writing them in a notebook or a Kindle scribe or anything like that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tea break because I hope that you come for the tech, but you stay for the tea. Now, all of the notebooks that you end up writing can be organized into folders, but the next update that has come to the Kindle Scribe actually allows you to put a little bit more organization in. Sometimes you might have a bunch of different notebooks here and you just want to be able to organize them a little bit better. Now you can by nesting further folders within others. So I'm inside of my folder, Tech and T, which is where all of my scripts are for my videos, or my notes rather, for my videos, and I can create another folder. For example, maybe I want to go ahead and just have a folder made specifically for Amazon products. Or maybe a more practical example, in my five minute journal folder, I have a bunch of different entries. And if you select one that is quite old, it will actually shoot up to the top of the list. That may not be super ideal, which is why maybe you wanna create a folder in here that is for, let's say 2022, December. And from there, I can go ahead and hit any of these entries, move them over to the actual 2022 December folder, and then they will all be there nice and organized for me to go find them without having to sift through so many different entries like I have in my five minute journal folder. And the final addition in this round of updates is actually the ability to go to any page inside of a notebook the same way that you would inside of a book. If you have a ton of pages in one of your notebooks, you can actually just go up to the contextual menu and you can hit go to page and just put in the page number. Uh, that way you can just jump all the way over to where you need to be inside of that notebook, nice and easy. So ultimately the Kindle Scribe is at first everything that you would expect, especially because of the first word in that name, Kindle. The reading experience is very enjoyable and because of this much larger canvas, you can actually blow up the text to make things a lot more comfortable to read if you need it. But now that it has writing capabilities and its take on it so far is fairly simple, the Kindle Scribe has actually managed to convert any of my analog experiences, reading or writing into one digital device, which I really enjoy. And if you need any more proof about how much I'm actually writing on the Kindle Scribe, take a look at the nub here on the premium pen. It's already pretty worn down. You can tell that I've written a lot with this thing and without any input lag, discernible input lag, and a very smooth writing experience, I have definitely enjoyed using this a lot. The thing is you have the two words, Kindle and Scribe, and when taken separately, they actually do a pretty good job of describing the experience with this device. The only things that I might have some quibbles over are when you try to put those two things together. 
For example, when you're inside of a book, you can't like freely write all over the margins or anything like that. Instead, you can just highlight various areas uh, of which the Kindle will, as usual, save those highlights so you can get to them easily. Or you can just create sticky notes, which will bring up a box to where you can actually write down your notes. The only problem I have with that is that the sticky notes are always separate from the actual book itself. You can always find those notes and that's fine, but it would be great to be able to write inside of the margins or actually on top of the books that you're actually reading so that they're all there in one view. And when it comes to the actual notebooks themselves, everything that you write just remains on the device itself. The Kindle Scribe is a lot like an analog notebook in that way, which doesn't really bother me a whole lot because I would want to have my thoughts and my notes to all be in one place. But I know there are some people out there who want to be able to sync these notes uh, to many other devices or places beyond just being able to quickly send them via email to your email address. But who knows, maybe further updates will actually address those things. And you know what? It's a good thing that Amazon are really putting their support behind the Kindle Scribe by providing these updates regularly throughout the rest of the year. And that's one of the joys of having a digital notebook, sometimes called an e-note. The fact that compared to an analog notebook, it can actually get better over time. And with the Kindle Scribe, it is already plenty for me, but I'm looking forward to all of those updates that are coming later on. And so there you have it, a Kindle that actually got me writing again. I've actually moved on from straight up scripting all of my videos on a laptop or keyboard or something like that, and I've gone to making notes on the Kindle Scribe, which will guide me throughout what should be a more casual delivery of my videos. It has been a great tool for me to have, and honestly, the intentionality of actually sitting down and writing on a notebook, including an e-note like this, has just uh, made the creation process that much more personal and that much more, let's say, even fun for me. Have you picked up a Kindle Scribe and have you written on it a lot? I will admit I probably have written more on this than I have actually read stuff. I do plan on changing that, but let me know what your experience has been like in the comment sections down below and let me know um, what updates you hope to see in the coming year as Amazon continues to support the Kindle Scribe with new features every now and then. So with all that said, I'm going to go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for hanging out with me again today, including during the tea break. And I'm just going to say take care of yourselves and each other and enjoy your tea, everybody.